Hi Dean, just a quick video put together covering the, the key points that we've covered so far during your visits. Um, swing on the left is the initial swing that we looked at uh, after the pro at Dunham, where you were sort of leaking the shots out to the right uh, for a player who draws the ball or wants to hit it pretty straight, draw bias perhaps. Sweet spot was getting a little bit too far out in front of the hands. It was too much outward during the downswing and the tendency was to hit the ball out the heel so that would lend itself to uh, it would make a centre contact pulls in order to draw the golf ball you'd have to aim uh, a tremendous amount to the right which is not something that you want to do um, as soon as you hit the heel of the golf club gear effect kicks in and irrespective of the path of the club the ball is going to curve more to the right than you would want so during the first session, the bulk of what, of what we did was to put an obstacle in place that prevents the toe end of the club moving out or the sweet spot moving away from you during the downswing. And you spent the bulk of the time working on that. When you came back, just run that original swing back to your delivery position. And we're using position six, which is when the shaft's parallel with the ground in the downswing. Uh, to compare the two swings and you can see there that after a few weeks work instead of the sweet spot being out in front of the hands it's now ever so slightly in behind the hands which is a much more appropriate position for you to draw the ball one of the things we noticed um, upon your return on this was that the the club face tended to be a little bit too open the impact we got you on flight scope and we saw that even though the sweet spot's delivery was more appropriate, the face was quite open to the path. So if we've got a if we've got a swing that is always, let's say, four degrees out to the right. I know that that arrow is an exaggerated um, position, obviously. Then what we want to have is a club face that is to the right, but not quite as far right as the path. If the path and the club phase match up and are equal amounts to the right, we get a push. If the club phase becomes more to the right than the path, the ball curves to the right, which is sort of what we were experiencing. And ideally, in order to draw the ball, we need a club phase that's slightly close to the path, but still open to the target. So the club phase would be pointing uh, a very small amount to the right, which is where we want the ball to start. And the path will be going further right of that, which would draw the ball back. That's what we're looking to achieve. So the next change for yourself was working on trying to close the face to the path in an appropriate manner. Um, rather than trying to roll the club, which is what a lot of golfers do. What we talked about was the condition of the player's wrist and how that affected things. And the feeling here was that you turn the knuckles under during the takeaway. So you pre-establish a more bold wrist condition here, very early in the piece. Turning the knuckles under, closes the club face to the path. Now even though that looks extreme, as the swing goes on, this starts to diminish anyway. And we're just sort of pre-setting the, the sort of geometry we want at impact. So as this plays through, just speed it up a little bit for us. We turn the knuckles under, at the top of the backswing now, a little bit more shut with the club face, which is fine. Uh, we've already pre-established that with the type of wrist movement that we create. As we're coming into the golf ball now, at that delivery position, the sweet spot is now, I'm just going to get rid of all the other lines, the sweet spot is now in behind the hands more than it was before. So bowing the left wrist helps keep the club in. And the angle of the club face now is fractionally more sort of toe down than it was at this point. So we've gone from a player who used to get the club out in front of the hands, which is not very appropriate for hitting a draw, to a player who got the club more inside the hands which is appropriate 
but had the club face slightly too op- uh, to slightly open at impact, producing pushes and slight leaks to the right. And now uh, we've evolved into a player who is presenting the club from the inside with a club face that's slightly close to the path without a violent rolling of the club through impact. So we're going to be nice and quiet with the hands through impact. See very little closure on the club face on either of those swings. And it's just working that in and getting more familiar with that, which by the sounds of things and the feedback you've given me during the last session or two, uh, you're starting to get the hang of that. So other things we discussed or another thing we, dis- we discussed during your long game uh, in one of your visits or relating to your long game in one of your visits was the, the plane of your swing. And you talked about how... Uh, some people have commented that the swing could get flat at times and one of your countermeasures for that was to lift the arms. Uh, once the arms lift, that requires you to do certain things in the downswing um, that makes the transition quite complicated. I'll be releasing a short video on that this next week or two, uh, or day or two, should I say, that I'll link you in on um, relating to why we don't want that to happen. We don't necessarily need you to lift the arms that much during the backswing. Um, and we talked about your your left shoulder and the amount of left tilt that you have. So when I'm looking down the camera here, your left tilt is what makes you stay down towards the golf ball. So left tilt is that. And what we do here is we go through some scenarios. I ask you to take the left tilt out of the swing. So as you lift your left shoulder up, the plane of the swing flattens. And then as you start to put some more left tilt in, and I said to you drop the left shoulder down. And as you do that, this plane that is very flat becomes more upright. So the more the left shoulder works down, the more the butt of the club, or as the left shoulder works down, the butt of the club is affected and the overall look of the golf swing is affected. So from a very flat looking top of the backswing to a more on plane top of the backswing by adding some left tilt, which is done by the left shoulder working down and the left knee continuously flexing rather than you lifting the hands and the arms. So that's the long game side of things that we've covered. What I want to do now is take a little look at some of the changes we discussed uh, during your visits relating to your short game, particularly your pitching. Okay, so here we have on the left your your initial visit, uh, trying to hit some pitch shots or some chip shots. These are about a 30 yard shot uh, that we're playing at the studio and couple of things we talked about first of all was that the ball was relatively far back um, so center of the swing is the left shoulder um, and in this instance we've got that ball maybe you know one two three four maybe five balls back of that left shoulder of the center of the arc so that's going to produce is quite a steep angle of attack potentially uh, where the leading edge of the club is very exposed and the loft of the club that you've taken out of the bag has been de-lofted dramatically. So whilst we whilst we are set up to play quite a low driven forward shot, maybe like this, uh, we're actually envisaging a sort of standard 54-56 degree type wedge shot. So we're going to have to create that trajectory. So we're setting up relatively steep and the swing itself is very shallow the club stays low to the ground for a long time on the way back there's very little involvement of the wrists but the club gets well outside the right thigh uh, as it approaches parallel right arm separates from the side at this point it's quite disconnected and the radius of that swing is very wide so now what we've got to do um, is potentially narrow it in the downswing, which doesn't really happen. Very wide coming into it, very shallow. The arc of the swing is too wide, too shallow, 
and we're bottoming out way behind the golf ball. You can see the low point well back. Now from there you have two options, you can either continue to drive the club into the ground, which is going to cause you to get it heavy, or you can raise the butt of the club very quickly to bring the club out of its descent and produce a shot that doesn't really look at the trajectory that golf ball leaves the studio on. It's not really fit into the type of loft that you'd established at address. We'd have expected with that setup to see a much lower trajectory. Uh, also explains why you're pretty good at chipping off at this stage, pretty good at chipping off range mats, but not terribly good when we get on grass and certainly when we get on some dodgy lice. So first thing we talked about was your setup. Second thing we talked about was narrowing the radius a little bit on the way back. And the work that you've done is paying dividends. Here we are now at the start of your most recent visit. The, the ball's position, and again, you're just trying to hit some standard 30-yard uh, shots. Instead of having the ball way, way back at the swing centre, the ball now is in a little bit more appropriate position for a standard shot, a little bit less back of centre, shaft not leaning forward as much. During the takeaway on this one on the left, very, very shallow, very low to the ground, very wide, arms leaving the side. Um, one of the problems with that is that in, in a short shot, we don't have sufficient time in the downswing to move the weight, load the wrist, narrow the radius and make that work. So what we're going to do here now is we're going to introduce a little bit more wrist hinge early in the swing, but the club doesn't get quite as far away from you. The club starts its gradual ascent a little bit earlier. Could add more, but we talked about that recently. You're more of a, of a Steve Stricker style uh, chipper and pitcher of the golf ball. Arms don't separate from the side. Wrists are definitely involved a little bit more. As we're coming into impact. The butt of the club Previously, it was very wide, it was artificially wide. Um, like the swing in general, and the butt of the club never really got back onto the right thigh, so it was very much outside the right thigh, whereas now we're on the right thigh. So, the radius of this swing, the distance from the center of the arc to the sweet spot, is narrower than what we're seeing here. So, that means that the club potentially will engage the grain less. Coming into impact, much less shaft lean, low point more under control, but the club doesn't raise as quick, club's actually releasing more, better use of the bounce, better use of the loft, everything about that is more appropriate. Now, going back to this swing on the right, so I'm liking the action. But one of the things we were touching on was how to hit higher, softer shots. So when the green's elevated, uh, what sort of things can you do to help you hit higher shots? Um, variable number one would be take the most lofted wedge in your bag. It's pretty straightforward. I think most people will go for that one. Uh, variable number two would be to open the club face to increase the loft of the most lofted club in your bag ever so slightly. Um, variable number three for you would be to move the ball position. Um, the nearer the ball is positioned to the left shoulder, the shallower the angle of attack and the greater the loft on the golf club. So when the ball is further back in the stance, the angle of attack is steeper and the loft on the golf club is less. So the further forward the ball goes, so use that ball position as your sort of third and final variation or variable. The, the ball position needs to be sort of in sympathy with the type of lie that you've got. It's much easier to move the ball forward in the stance when we've got a bit of grass under the golf ball. So bear that in mind if the ball's sat down or if the ball is on a very tight lie, you certainly don't want to be moving the ball too far forward. So first port of call, most lofty club. Second port of call, opening the club face. Third port of call, manoeuvring the ball around to give you that little bit extra loft. 
you can use as many or as few of the variables as you like. Uh, you can add as much or as little as you need uh, in any given circumstance. And the thing to remember is that each time you add a variable, you're making the shot a little bit more complicated. So, so use accordingly. Um, don't overplay shots. But just work around that framework and keep trying to build your confidence up in this side of your game. I really like the action that you're producing here. I think there are things in that I'd like to refine, and we will do in time. But overall, based on where you were previously, there's a much better setting of the wrists, much better control of the low point, much better control of the swing's radius. And a lot of it now is working around, and playing around with these variables in practice, having a process in place where you say, you know what, if I get this shot, this is what I've got to do. Uh, but you have a benchmark to work from um, and you know what variables to add in order to produce the type of shot that you want. Will you get every shot right? No. Will you have a way of dealing with the situation that you're in? Definitely. And it's just getting better at execution. Um, improving your execution comes from clearly understanding what you're trying to achieve. Uh, good luck with it. If you've got any questions, feel free to contact me and look forward to working with you again in a month or so's time. Well done.